Thank you. Thank you for the invitation, Dr. McKenzie. Um, before I start giving the data on the leopard study, I decided to place some of the um, more than uh, uncommon cases where we use the endologic graph with other graphs where we can actually treat the patient better. Um, leopard data is not fully done yet. Uh, it's going to be um, reported at the end of 2018. This is all preliminary data that I'm presenting right now. It's preliminary from, Jan uh, this was all reported at January of 2017 this year, and it was made public uh, on, in March. So what are the advantages and weaknesses of the AFX graph? Well, one of the advantages of the AFX graph is the fact that uh, no disclosures. The fact that we have a, we are we're able to, um, we we're able to uh, uh, not sacrifice the uh, aortic bifurcation, and it's, sometimes it's very important. As in the, in this case, this patient had bilateral hypo uh, artery aneurysm, which can't be seen here. They were about three and a half, but he had a large, large uh, renal uh, renal artery below. We were able to pull the AFX and do bilateral. Um, uh, gore graphs uh, uh, over here for him. Here's another patient who was not also a open candidate, large neck, very calcified. We were able to uh, place the place the bifurcated graph below and on top place a gore thoracic graph to cuff the aneurysm. She's very old, not a good candidate. And this is another last example where mix and match does help with the AFX graft, where again, the uh, proximal neck was quite large. There was neck, however, again, not a good uh, uh, open operative candidate, and we were able to uh, repair him. But what have we learned about EVARs in the past? This is what the leopard trial was going to try to, is going to try to uh, answer. Uh, there is low perioperative mortality, but there's no sustained uh, long-term data of whether the mortality is beneficial over open surgery. There's no consensus to cost effectiveness. The case that I just showed earlier, the, the one with the bilateral hypogastric aneurysm, that's, that's nearly close to $80,000 that we spent on that. Uh, there's no head-to-head -head randomization study comparing all of these graphs. Um, so the leopard trial. Uh, it's a prospective, randomized, multi-center trial, which we're a part of. It's a uh, real-world population. And again, it, it is going to uh, look at the anatomical fixation versus the proximal fixation or the active fixation that has um, been used uh, uh, recently. Um, what we're recording is uh, aneurysm-related complications, which are defined by perioperative uh, deaths rupture on table, uh, conversion to open, uh, endo leaks, occlusions, migrations of greater than 10 millimeters, or enlargement of the aneurysm of greater than five, and device-related uh, interventions. So as of now, again, from January of uh, 2018, we have uh, 501 patients. 20, 254 are in the um, AFX, uh, site and the rest are in the proximal active fixation. Durant uh, leading the way for most. Uh, the preliminary one year data, again, there, it's broken down into five subsets. Uh, the rupture rate for both, uh, these are usually, these are all done usually obviously uh, under, um, and, um, these are not done for uh, ruptures. And the conversion rate is higher for the reference group. Um, I was not able to find out why there's a higher conversion rate. Post-op endo leaks uh, rate is a little bit lower with the endologics graft. And this is what I was able to uh, ascertain from the information. So there's about 11 endo leaks, um, type 2 endo leaks in, in, in the AFX uh, arm. And there's about 15, uh, there are 15 in the uh, active fixation. Six being, uh, and none of them have been needed secondary repair, to, uh, secondary procedure to, for repair. Um, type three endo leaks are, uh, have been reported also. There are zero on both sides. I think this number is going to go up by next year because uh, some of the data that's coming in just recently, there have been a few more type three endo leaks because in the initial trial, people were not 
um, overlapping the, 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 a, the AFX uh, stents uh, quite enough. They were only doing about two centimeters or maybe one centimeter, and there was a lot of graph uh, migration and breakdown. Um, there's been more migrations with the AFX uh, side of the trial and sarc sac enlargement on the uh, active fixation. Um, limb occlusions are much more prevalent with the, uh, with the um, active fixation site. And when the data is made uh, public, we'll be able to tell which limbs we're actually including on uh, active fixation, which specific graphs. Uh, Reinterventions were also higher with the uh, active fixation arm. And the perioperative death of two was only in the AFX uh, site. I, we were not able to get the in information again for why they actually had the death. So freedom from um, ARS is lower with the AFX, which is what, they, what we're going to be re reporting at WEATH. Uh, this year, and it's at 90.9% compared to the active fixation, which is apparently significantly uh, um, makes it non-inferiority to the uh, um, to the um, sorry to to our active fixation style. They're not going to be able to do a superiority uh, test on this because, of course, we are not going to get 2,000 patients in this. I think we're going to pretty much stop at 800 if we get to it. Um, so in conclusion, uh, this will be our level one, first level one data, real world uh, population using commercial device comparing AFX to everything else. But I think in overall in the future, we'll be able to compare all of the graphs that are, that are being used in comparison to AFX, and we'll be able to get some real answers. We're also going to be able to get answers about how much we're spending for these uh, patients. It's non-inferiority, uh, non and one-year follow-up data is going to be reported at the end of 2018. The follow-up will continue to five years here, though. That's it. <laughs>